हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू द दृष्टि आई एस इंग्लिश यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज प्रज्ञा एंड वी आर हियर टुडे विद आर न्यू इनिशिएटिव एंड दैट इज द पॉलिटी प्राइमर सीरीज पॉलिटी इज अ वाइटल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द आई एस एग्जाम एवरी ईयर अराउंड टेन टू फिफ्टीन क्वेश्चन आर आस फ्रॉम दिस सब्जेक्ट पॉलिटी क्वेश्चन आर मार्क्स फैचिंग एंड ईजियर टू अटेम्प्ट इफ द बेसिक कंसेप्ट आर क्लियर इन दिस सीरीज we are going to discuss some of the important topics which have remained in news and we'll also try to help you in developing a basic understanding of these topic so now let us begin with our today's topic and the title of our today's discussion is why anti defection laws need to be reformed this topic is important from your gs 2 perspective and that is polity so now let us analyze what we are going to study in our today's lecture so firstly we'll see the background of the topic or the context in which we are having this discussion today then we are also going to see what is anti defection law we are also going to analyze some of the issues which are present in the anti defection law we are also going to analyze what is the role of election commission of india in regulating the political parties then we are also going to see some of the important cases and the opinion of honorable supreme court in this regard and we are also going to see why there is a need for a reform in the anti defection law and in the end we'll see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination so now let us proceed to understand the background or the context in which we are having this discussion today so you might be aware of the recent political crisis that has happened in maharashtra due to defection not only in maharashtra it has also happened in other states in the past and this is why we are having this discussion today in where wherein we are trying to understand the importance and the basics of the anti defection law in india so now let us see the history and origin of anti defection law in india so before we see the history and origin of anti defection law in india let us discuss the meaning of the term defection so defection means floor crossing by a member of one political party to another political party so in parliamentary parlance floor is a neutral area and floor crossing means that a member has changed from his original political affiliation to some other political affiliation for example a member of uh, the indian national congress joins bjp or the B a member of the bjp joins indian national uh, congress so this is what is defection so the provisions related to the anti defection law were not present in the original indian constitution they were added by the 52nd constitutional amendment act of 1985 and this constitutional amendment act has brought changes in four articles of the constitution and these four articles are article 101 clause 3 clause a Article one hundred two, clause two; Article one ninety, clause three, clause A; and Article one ninety one, clause two. So, what are these articles? So, Article one hundred one, clause three, clause A; and Article one ninety, clause three, clause A, talks about vacation of seats. And Article one hundred two, clause two; and Article one ninety one, clause two, talks about disqualification from membership this constitutional amendment act has also added the famous 10 schedule in the constitution and this is famously known as the anti defection law now let us see what are the grounds of disqualification under the anti defection law so the first and the foremost ground is if an elected member voluntarily gives up 
his membership of a political party so for example a member of parliament states that now he does not subscribe to his original political affiliation and wants to change to some other political party then he will be liable to be disqualified and this can also happen by conduct we are going to see an important case law in this regard in our further discussion so the second ground is if he votes or abstains from voting in such house contrary to any direction issued by his political party or anyone authorized to do so that is a whip without obtaining prior permission so for example uh, there is a no confidence motion that is pending in the lok sabha or there is a second reading of a important bill pending in some either of the two houses and that member does not follow the party line or violates a three line whip then he will be liable to be disqualified but there is an exception to this general rule and the exception states that for his disqualification his abstention from voting should not be condoned by his political party or the whip in 15 days so this act of his uh, disobedience should not be uh, condoned by his political party or the whip the third ground is if an independently elected members join some political party so who is an independently elected member let us understand by an example for example there is a candidate who is fighting elections on his own goodwill and in his own brand name without any political party's uh, ticket or without having any political affiliation so he is stated to be an independent candidate and if he wins the election and subscribes therein to a political party he will be liable to be disqualified now the fourth ground is if any nominated member joins a political party after the expiration of 6 months from the date of his nomination so as we all know 12 members are nominated to the rajya sabha uh, from various fields such as literature art or social sciences and 6 months time is given to these members to subscribe to a political affiliation or to join a political party but after the expiration of 6 months they state that they have a political indication or they uh, want to join a political party they will be liable to be disqualified now let us understand the uh, grounds of merger and split under anti defection law for disqualification so what do we understand by this term split so when in 1985 the 10th schedule was added to our constitution it had paragraph 3 and what was mentioned in this paragraph 3 that if a original political party undergoes a split that means one third of the uh, members of the original uh, political party Uh, join and form a new faction then it will be regarded as split and split was not considered to be a ground for disqualification but after the 91st constitutional amendment act of 2003 paragraph has been 3 has been omitted and the 91st constitutional amendment act also changed this and now at least two thirds of the member of a party have to be in favor of a merger for it to have validity in the eyes of law so if two parties political parties want to have a merger within themselves then it has to be approved by two third of its member to be valid in the eyes of law so in 2019 a similar case happened then the vice president of india ordered the merger of telugu desam party into the ruling bjp when Uh, four of its uh, five members decided to join bjp so a similar incidents happened in 2019 wherein it was ordered by the vice president of india that a merger should happen between the telugu desam party and the ruling bjp after four of the five members of the telugu desam party decided to join the bjp and 
this saved them from disqualification on the ground of defection. So, this is basically a merger. A split happens in one original party. For example, a split happened in the NCP. A split happened in Shiv Sena. But a merger all usually happens between two political parties. And this is the difference between split and merger. The ground of split has been removed by the uh, 91st Constitutional Amendment Act of 2003. And the ground of merger to have a validity in eyes of law should be prescribed by two-third of the members of the party. The members so disqualified can stand for elections from any political party for a seat in the same house. So, they are free to contest the election again from whatever political party they have chosen to join and can, they can also contest the election for a seat in the same house. The decision on the questions as to disqualification will be decided by the speaker in the case of Lok Sabha and the chairman in the case of the Rajya Sabha and this decision of the speaker or the chairman is subject to judicial review. So, what do we understand by this term judicial review? It is review of the decision by the higher judiciary if it appears to be prima facie malified or arbitrary in nature but this can only be done on limited grounds and we are also going to see an important case law in this regard in our further discussions. So, now let us see some of the issues which are prevalent in the anti-defection law. So, the arguments against the anti-defection laws are threefold. So, firstly the first argument is that there is no provision, there is no provision for a timeline for the speaker to take decision under the 10 schedule. The speaker either takes the decision too quickly or uh, sits on the decision for a longer period of time indicating a political bias. Then secondly, the speakers and the chairman are not unbiased referees as we all know how the speaker is appointed. The speaker is uh, chosen among the MPs themselves and the chairman is the vice president of India in the case of Rajya Sabha. So, genuinely and naturally they have their own political affiliations and biases. So, they are not unbiased, truly unbiased and this is also a, an issue in the anti-defection law. And the third ground relates to the interpretation of this law by our Indian courts. There is no uniform interpretation by our Indian courts of this law and there is no precedent that is there is no uniform precedent on this law of the supreme court this makes the situation even more difficult so these are the issues which are present in the anti-defection law now let us analyze what is the role of the election commission of india in registering a political party so election commission of india derives its power from article 324 of the Indian Constitution and this pro article provides the power of superintendence, direction and control to Election Commission of India. So, as we all know, the Election Commission of India is responsible for conducting the elections in India and the power to control the election, the power of superintendence has been provided to the Election Commission of India. Now, let us see the role of Election Commission of India in registering and deregistering a political party. So, under section 29 clause A of the Representation of Peoples Act of 1950, the Election Commission of India has power to register a political party. So, for any party to have a status of national uh, political party, it has to be registered by the Election Commission of India under Section 29A of the Representations of the People Act 1950. Representation of the People Act 1950 and 1951 has been enacted by the Parliament in relation to the elections. The Supreme Court in Indian National Congress versus Institute of Social Welfare and others case made it clear that the Election Commission of India cannot deregister a party on the violation of the constitution. So, this is a limitation that has been posed by the Supreme Court on the Election Commission of India. 
that the election commission of india cannot deregister a party solely on the ground of violation of the constitution now let us see the limitations of the election commission of india in deregistering a party so the lci cannot also deregister a party for breaching the undertaking given to it at the time of registration so when registration of a political party happens they are administered a oath and if they violate this oath uh, in future the election commission of india is not empowered to uh, deregister a party solely on this ground even the election commission of india cannot also uh, deregister a party if they violate the basic uh, principles enshrined in our indian constitution so this is very ironical in nature that the election commission of india also has the power to adjudicate in case of a split of a political party so the eci has the power to decide disputes between factions of a political party in case of a split under para 15 of the election symbols reservation and allotment order 1968 so when the shiv sena uh, split into two factions that is the eknath shinde faction and the uddhav uh, thakre faction the dispute related to the original uh, use of symbol of shiv sena was settled by the election commission of india and it generally uh, either settles the dispute itself or asks the factions to approach the court and in deciding the matter of split of a political party three tests are followed by the election commission of india and these three tests were laid down by the supreme court in the case of sadik ali versus election commission of india 1971 and the tests are the test of majority test of party constitution and the test of aims and objectives and these three tests can be used by the election commission of india to adjudicate a matter of a split now let us see some of the important cases in this regard and the opinion of our honorable supreme court in these cases so the first case law is kihoto holohan versus rasilu and others it was decided in 1992 and this case basically was to determine the constitutional validity of the uh, 52nd constitutional amendment act and the 10th schedule and this case basically provided the tooth and nail to the anti defection law in india it was observed by the supreme court in this case that anti defection law was constitutionally valid and it also made the speaker's order subject to judicial review on limited grounds so we were discussing before that any decision taken by the speaker is subject to judicial review and the it was observed by the supreme court in this case but this judicial review can only happen on limited grounds it also made clear that the court's jurisdiction would not come into play unless the speaker passes an order no intervention can be done prior to a adjudication so the court can only intervene in cases of uh, after the speaker has passed an order the court cannot intervene while the adjudication is still pending at the speaker's end the schedule's provisions were salutary and intended to strengthen the fabric of indian parliamentary democracy by curbing unprincipled and unethical political defections so before this case was uh, decided a uh, many unethical uh, defections were happening in happening in our country there was also a famous situation of iram and gayaram so to curb the unethical uh, defections in our country and to maintain the fabric of our parliamentary democracy the supreme court acknowledged the importance of anti defection law in this case now let us uh, discuss a case which we were talking about that which also recognized conduct as voluntarily giving up of membership so the supreme court in ravi s nayak versus union of india case 1994 observed that the phrase voluntarily gives up membership of a political party had a wider connotation than a resignation so 
voluntarily giving up of uh, membership does not only mean the uh, resignation from a political party it has a much wider sense and a connotation even in absence of a formal resignation from membership an inference can be drawn from the conduct of a member that he has voluntarily giving up his membership of the political party to which he belongs for example the member suddenly starts criticizing his own political party in the uh, in press or he starts suddenly speaking against his own political party or starts to willfully disobey the party lines then it can be presumed that he has voluntarily given up his membership of the original political party to which he belonged and this is known as conduct so this was observed by the supreme court in this case then in the case of shrimat balash saheb patel versus the honorable speaker karnataka legislative assembly 2019 the karnataka case this is the famous karnataka case and this case what has what had happened was that 17 mlas were disqualified by the speaker uh, from the karnataka state legislative assembly and in this case the supreme court observed that it was not mandatory for the mlas to follow the three line whip and in the trust vote and the mlas would not be bound by the whip the three judge bench comprising of justice n v ramana sanjeev khanna and krishna murari upheld the speaker uh, decision of the speaker of karnataka's legislative assembly of the disqualification why because their conduct happened before they uh, split from their party or before they uh, resigned from their party that is why the speaker disqualified them and this decision of the speaker was upheld by the supreme court an important observation was also made by the supreme court in this case that the speaker could not disqualify the members before of the end of the state legislative assembly tenure so this was some of the important observations made by the supreme court in this case now let us discuss a recent ruling of the supreme court or the famous manipur assembly case so in the case of kesham meghachandra singh versus the honorable speaker manipur legislative assembly the supreme court recommended the parliament to amend the constitution and bring a body to decide the disqualification issues as the speaker should be the quasi judicial authority and this was a very important observation made by the supreme court in this case the supreme court also directed the parliament to amend the constitution to make this change we were discussing that how speaker also has a political bias and this was the solution that was put forward by the supreme court to curb this issue now let us see that why anti defection laws in india need a reform so gaps in anti defection laws are used to dislodge governments to break parties apart and to lure the leaders so what happens is that horse trading a phenomenon is often used to uh, buy and purchase the mps if the magic number is not achieved on the floor of the house and there is then there are instances of defection then there are instances of floor crossing and these had become very uh, common in our country today so these are happening because of the gaps in the anti defection law so the first solution can be intra party regulations lack of regulation in the political party itself makes it very easier for the mps to defect and not follow the party line so there should be an uh, intra party regulation strict intra party regulation to uh stop the misuse of the loophole in the anti defection law then there is absence of party constitution so the second issue that uh, why the anti defection law needs to be reformed is absence of party constitution so not all political parties have a constitution and even if they have their own constitution it is not comprehensive it is not mandatory to follow that constitution so this uh, exposes the members of the party to the uh, vice of defection so what can be the solution 
to curb this issue so the first solution can be a party constitution should be mandatory every political party in india should have a comprehensive uh, constitution stating about the party lines and the ideas and beliefs of that political party this will help the mps to follow the party line in emergency situations then the eci must be empowered to suspend registration or to deregister a party on violation of the constitution or for not following the basic principles that have been enshrined in our indian constitution so as we were discussing that eci was a mere spectator when the political party violated the basic principles of our indian constitution so this should not be the case the eci should be empower to deregister a party on this ground with this we have come to a conclusion of our today's topic we have discussed that what are anti defection law we have also examined the grounds of elect, uh, disqualifications under the anti defection law we have also seen some of the issues that are present in the anti defection law we have also seen the important cases of the supreme court in this regard and the observation of the honorable supreme court and we have also seen the steps we, which we can take to reform the anti defection law in india now let us discuss a practice question for your prelims examination so the question is which one of the following schedules of the constitution of india contains provisions regarding the anti defection law and this is a previous year question it was asked in the year 2014 the options are second schedule fifth schedule eighth schedule or the 10th schedule so as we have discussed in our today's lecture the answer will be option d 10th schedule it was added by the constitutional amendment act of 1985 now let us see a practice question for your mains examination so the question is the role of individual mps or the member of parliament has diminished over the years as a result healthy constructive debates on policy issues are not usually witnessed how far can this be attributed to the anti defection law which was legislated but with a different intention this is also a previous year question and it was asked in the year 2013 so kindly attempt this question for your mains examination i hope this session was insightful for you if you found this discussion helpful kindly like the video and subscribe to the channel for more such updates thank you